everybody, welcome to episode 139 of the Bono Podcast, where we talk all things Blood Bowl. Jingle. Welcome back. I'm Ben, and once again, I'm joined by Blood Ties Ben. BT, how are you? Hello. Uh, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. After this fumble league, uh, it's been quite emotional. So um, <laughs> we'll, we'll touch on that in a minute. I think we absolutely should. And talking of fumble league, oh no, Trips, your window is small. That's no good. That's no good at all. That feels like unfavoritism. Uh, we are joined yeah. by the fumble lord himself, Miltonio Banderas. How you doing, Milt? Yeah, I'm doing good, thanks. No. Not had my fumble game yet. Looking forward to it. Oh, no. I feel like I'm disrespecting trips here with the tiny window mode because we've also got Don't trips. Run. How are you, buddy? <laughs> oh, no. Have I killed him? Has he, has he gone, gone quiet as well? Trips can... No, no, it's still there. Medium. Hot key three. Engage. Woohoo! There we go. We've got trips up there with the crew as well so um i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna jump in and do the the bt bit which is what we're gonna do today because today we have got our hands on the spike we've got our hands on the team and we have got our hands on the pitch button please so that we can basically oh and we've got the dice as well because dice is very so you missed the most important <laughs> we do have the dice they are not the best for streaming but we can definitely show them off on cam as well to kind of have a look because what we're going to do is we're going to have a chat about gnomes and kind of do a quick hasty spike chat and review but before we go full gnomes milton where is the uh the fumble league at the moment the inaugural bonehead discord fumble league i can't remember what you've called we it uh fumble league spring league season one <laughs> something stupidly long rolls off the tongue <laughs> i like it it's catchy real catchy um yeah no we're in round eight now we're on our eighth week our final round and the top of the table is pretty tight and we've had a draw at the top as well so i think there's quite a few coaches that are in the running to get into playoffs but as Ben has just alluded to, we have our wooden spoon already. <laughs> and, <laughs> it and was who, a hard fought battle. Who won the wooden spoon? Sharon. I think by Caron, the looks of it. Yeah. yeah, not Caron. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't actually know. I think it is Caron because he's it, a ferryman. He's the ferryman. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. So I, always, I, I, I thought it was Caron this entire time, right? But I'm pretty sure it's Caron. The concierge. Thinking back to Hades. But... The concierge in, in John Wick. That is his yeah. name, and it is pronounced differently. But I guess he's, he's yeah. French. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, Percy Jackson has, and they pronounced it differently, and I wasn't quite sure. As well, long as it's not Charon, we'll I think it's okay. That might be the worst. I did spend the first like five years of playing 40k calling it a Chimera, um, which is neither a tank really. nor a Chimera. <laughs> yeah, I know. But then again, I also spent the first few years uh, reading Harry Potter with um, the adventures of Harry, Ron, and Hermione. So uh, I think Hermione, like, Hermione, Hermione, I was Hermione, well, Hermione, Hermione. well shocked yeah. when I watched the first movie, <laughs> and I'm like, Hermione, what? <laughs> It's like, who's that? Like, oh, oh, okay. Not a Jedi. Um, that's fine. Uh, Wingardium Leviosa, lightsaber. No, it wasn't quite the one. Um, the GW yeah. store manager who was like there when I was getting into 40k used to pronounce them Tyranids, and it bothered me so much. They are from like, the planet Tyran. Still this. Yeah, I think that's why. I think he was really adamant, being like, no, they must be called Tyranids because they're from Tyran. <laughs> It is weird, I didn't know it? they were from a planet. I thought they were from a different galaxy. Well, they are, but they were discovered on the planet Tyran by an Inquisitor. Oh, okay. mm. um, All their names are based on, like, Discovery, isn't it? Like, uh, like yeah, Von Ryan's leapers and stuff. I wouldn't want to be the kind Inquisitor of Inquisitor that discovered that. Yeah. No, <laughs> Sounds like the worst kind of job. I think being an Inquisitor... Yeah, you didn't discover them for much. I did, yeah. I did 3D print a... Uh, a death of von ryan's death leaper though uh, just because oh, i had space on a plate cool. and i was like oh wicked yeah let's have one of those just for uh, for the sake of it um just because i had space on the plate so uh we've got the wooden spoon and what is it top four to finals milt uh yes 
yeah, that's what we're running for this uh, season. And do any of you have a chance at the top four? Yeah, I think I'm in still in there. Oh, okay, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. That's... Tri- Trips is doing really well. Yeah. How many wins are you on? I'm three, two, and two after seven games. That's so pretty good. Must be uh, good. Dark Elves on Friday night, and whoever wins that match may sneak into third or fourth. Is that Frenzy Stab Nick? Dark Elves. Yes. Ooh. Mm. I love that you're going against Dark Elves as well, Trips. It's kind of like yeah. destined to be. Yeah. We've got a second second C of Dark Elves in the league, so. Mm. No, Trip, Trips has a good chance. Me too, I suppose. I can edit the points, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be clear, Milton. You've already won one award by, well, you probably won it in about week three, which is most casualties taken. Yeah, what are oh, you yeah. now? Like tw- minus 26 or something? You're on minus 28. You've taken oh. 32 casualties. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah, I've had, about, games, I've had about four teams, so... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like the broom like paradox thing, isn't it? You know, if you replace the head and then yes. you replace yeah. the face, it's still the same broom. Oh no, he's still got the one really bad troll, haven't you? Yeah, he's stuck around. I don't know. No, the the latest update is uh, the troll. What well, the other troll got pile driver, and oh gosh, what was the other skill? Oh, so, please tell me it was shadowing. Stand firm and pile driver. Stand yeah. firm's okay. Pile driver. Pile driver right. is okay. Pile driver, and then pile driver into the ground. Does, your, does anybody only garden, have guard? garden pile driver on the on the pump wagon? You got armbar, guard, and pile. Oh no, arm, that arm is bar, that yeah. is that is a non bow. Uh, having guard and pile driver on yourself is is is, yeah. is, 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 is not yeah. <laughs> They're both well, independently I mean, all right on a pump wagon, yeah. but like, like if I can pull the win off, so I'm playing against uh, wood elves. Although they're a pretty, pretty low TV Wood Elf team because the uh, Treeman's out and a couple of the positionals are out. Um, I think I've still got enough cash for Hackflim. So. Oh, that's dirty. <laughs> um, if I can pull the win off, I'll have gone four wins, four losses. That which I think for my first time playing Snotlings is both achievable terrible, right? and a very risk. I mean, they always say, what is it, like a, a draw for Stunty is an absolute win. Mm. Though, have you been playing snotlings that much, or have you been playing a few snotlings and lots of starflex? Yeah, okay. I mean, that's fair criticism, as Ben I mean, found uh, out in our game. They're, they're, they are tiny green halflings in that respect. <sighs> yeah, it's been a lot of hack phlegm and one time morgue. Ooh. Which I enjoy. Yeah, that's. The, oh, the did you use morgue against BT? Yeah, yeah. More, Morgan Hackflam. Oh, Morg didn't do that much. I'm Morgan, gonna yeah, say Morgan that. was kind of useless. He did let you down a lot. Yeah, um, he did. Mighty Blow plus two is just such a threat. Like it's just yeah. such a threat, though. It is. It changes how you play. Um, it was similar in this game I had against Carol with the Goblins, where like he had a he had his um fanatic, and it's like with a fanatic you don't really. Nth one hundred selected. Headphones channel right. one high sensitivity <laughs> selected. Okay. Random feedback. <laughs> what the hell happened? I was trying to change my headphone setting and it actually fed back through the, the mic. <laughs> All right. Okay. Glad we all heard that. Um, yeah, tech. Yeah, so you have like a fanatic, but you, you pay for a fanatic. You don't expect them to do much, but if, you, if they buy a turn off your opponent, I think they kind of get their money money back. So, that was the original thing with yeah. Bomber, like back in the day when like it's kind of like you play with Bomber or a Bomber just on the team and it's a distraction for two to three turns. Like Yeah. Even yeah, if, they've got to dedicate a lot of players to, to hit them. Well, even if they spend a, a turn, a, a turn, like half a turn's worth of activations to just take out Bomber, that's a really good fifty K. If there was an inducement yeah, that was fifty K exactly. on a four plus your opponent can't activate a player. You would take it because that's what you kind of do. You end up moving half your team to kind of balance out, which, yeah, it's good. And then, of course, there was the whole bomb drama um, in Blood Bowl. I think we better kind of <laughs> nail that one down. But yeah, anyway, um, well done, Milt. That's, that's, that's a very, very, very good job with the first Fumble League. And it seems to have gone really, really, really well. Uh, yeah, I've been very happy with it and really appreciate everyone that's played in it. They've been really good at organising their games and participating. I look forward to running the next one. Mm, fantastic. Right. 
Anybody want to mention anything else before we jump into having a perusal at our post today? For example, something that's happening this weekend. Oh. DT. Yeah. Oh. What are you doing on oh, Sunday? Oh, what, this weekend? <laughs> yes, yeah, so Sunday. We are, uh, sorry, uh, the, the stream sort of went behind a bit. I don't know if it affected other people. Mm. Um, yeah, anyway, I've caught up. Uh, so Sunday, we are going to bring back the Paintathon, which I think is four years since we did it. What? Um, somehow. Blah, Isn't wow. that? I mean, it must have no, been. No, it'd be three. It'd be three, because it's Blood Bowl 2020. It came out end of 2020, didn't it? And I did Nobility. Oh, you did do Nobility. That was the last time I think we did it. I've done streams, but this is this will be the at least twenty four hours. I will say I was going to say twenty four, but it probably will be more. Um, start to finish gnomes uh, painting. So if you are around Sunday or Monday, <laughs> um, then I shall be painting this up in brush type style, which I um, think is going to be yeah. very 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 cool. Uh, for the stream, you going games workshop trees, or is this? The non games um, trees in the stream. I think I think we, I think we're happy to do Agni, right? Yes. I think because yeah. I've got we've got like one tree, but I think it'll be fun to just mix it with the others. The others are kind of cool. Definitely. Oh yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. I I just love having content so I can dip in and just kind of um, be supportive <laughs> of you and be like, oh, Grab the normal rotor to check in on him and make sure he's <laughs> yeah giggling into the mic. Because... These are quite fun because they start off so high energy and then by about like the 18 hour mark. That's when that delirium kicks in, and when it's about four a.m., I think I did. I've done one before. Was I, it might have been the bonehead one, but I um, it was like four a.m., and I could hear Boney M Rasputin on loop, and I'm just like, where is it coming from? I I I, I was there like like opening the window. It's like someone playing like I'm having a party. Because all I hear is like rah rah Rasputin. Russia's going. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my head. I'm just like. <laughs> This is I'm going crazy. <laughs> was that the um, nobility with the gold gold trim several hours? Oh yeah, yeah, we're not doing that again. Yeah. Oh. No, it will be better this time. I, I, if we can get it under 24, that that's gonna be the goal. But yeah. Oh, we shall see. Wicked. I love that. And of course, we'll see a bunch of you on Saturday at uh, Dorset Dungeon Bowl. So this is being recorded on Wednesday. I'm hoping to get this edited and out to the Patreons tomorrow. It's on Thursday, and it'll be out to everybody else on Friday. And then it's time for Dorset Dungeon Bowl on Saturday. And then Ben's got his big stream on Sunday. And then we've got Monday Night Blood Bowl on Monday, which is going to be sevens. Two games of sevens, Trips and Ben, both running gnomes once a piece each. Uh, what teams are, what non-gnome team are each of you going to run? Each of you going to run one non-gnome team. So, I think, I think following on from the stream on Monday, I think I've decided Elven Union is going yeah. to be the one. We're going to try them. I like that. Trips, choose your weapon. Ooh. Um, quite tempted to say Black Orcs, actually, because I quite like to see Grab and Gnomes. I've got the uh, Black Mountain Buccaneers just over there. So that'll be fine. I like the idea of Black Orcs. Yeah. Another. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Cool. Right, good. I will get the graphics ready, which is cool. Can I reserve the undead ice, uh, dice, please? <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're still there. It's fine. Oh, they burnt last week. <laughs> Got to ban those. Oh, Ian oh, oh. hasn't taken them away slowly. Yeah, <laughs> ben, them on the way out. Ben was holding on to them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, these are mine. These are mine. Um, absolutely wicked. Now we will be doing gnomes. So let's bounce in to some of the gnome goodies that we've got. And the first thing is the pitch. So the pitch comes with two sides. Uh, I have paid very little attention to the pitch. Um, I'm going to be fully honest. Normally, like there's there tends to be a bit of um difficulty buying the pitches. I, I think I've been like really nervous. Milton, do you remember the the lizardman pitch that like came into existence for like five seconds? Oh, I remember that. It looked like an mm. Amazon pitch, but it was actually the lizardman pitch. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, very very much like your dice collecting. I I kind of was was going for one of each of the pitches, trying to grab them all. Yeah, and that one just absolutely went away. But this one, I've not. This really is the one that like started off your trend of buying from GW and another shop and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah, I didn't yeah. bother this time actually, but that's because there was an hour long queue. Uh, so yeah, I just went all in on Entoyment, and Entoyment came through. So if you order with Entoyment, you should be good to go. Because I popped around there today, so big thank you to them. Uh, they have a big, big, big stash of Games Workshop stuff arrived today. 
like big boxes worth, which is wicked. Was there I'm sure it was, was there a kill team thing come out this weekend? Yeah, kill team this weekend as well. So yeah, saw the big orange boxes. Um, but for the known pitch, you've got the dark side, and appropriately, you've got the light side, which. I like the look of the light side when we saw it on the Warhammer community, but in person, I don't know if you can mm. how well you can see this. It's good. It looks a, looks very similar to the halfling one, which I know gnomes are not going to appreciate me saying because that is a that is a taboo subject. Uh, I think it's probably because it's got like flowers that look like confetti, but mm. it, it's a cool looking pitch. I mean, from from you guys' point of view, as we obviously we, we're going to stream a lot, how visible is this pitch? Oh, super visible. The having the squares like um actually like painted differently is is really nice. Like that's similar to like the vampire one, which always comes yeah. out really clear. I oh. think the other side looks clearer. Oh, the other side is beautiful. The other, like, the other side is my favorite. I think. Yeah, I, I straight up admit that the, the, the other side is my preference. But I do think on the camera it looks. I think it's like, yeah. yeah I, I don't know. It's the contrast of the colors. I think. And you're right. That checkered helps define the and you can really squares. see the scrimmage and the wide zone. There is no, <laughs> yeah. No there's no vampire pitch in that way. You're looking at it going, where exactly is the line of scrimmage? I like that the trapdoors are little like portals as well. And they, they have special rules. This they, they are not trapdoors. Uh they're not we'll trapdoors. Have, cool. have a look at the spike in a the minute. They've, they've got the rules for them in there. And it's 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 actually really cool. I, I wasn't expecting that. Stargates yeah. yeah, kind of. Although you don't get uh, dematerialized if someone just buries the other side, uh, which mm. potentially you should be doing. Like the pitch, haven't actually looked to see if I could find the splattered goblin yet, but we'll probably do that at some point on a stream <laughs> because that's what people <laughs> tend to want to do. But I, I, yeah, big fan. Good pitch. If you can get hold of it, then magic. If you can't, then I won't worry too much about it. But, um. You know, the thing is with Blood Bowl, once you've got one pitch, you don't massively need any others. Uh, although it is very, very, very good fun. But the thing that we're kind of here to talk about, I mean, everybody's seen the miniatures, we've seen the teams. The Spike magazine is inarguably the most important thing. So we're going to, as a group, flick through it. Um, there we go. Let's do that. Let's oh, my word. This is <laughs> good fun. <laughs> 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 I've been... oh, a jump scare. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've been playing. I've been playing. Yeah. Um five nights at Benny's. <laughs> no, this is all this is all last night. This is all last night and this morning with Libby like watching YouTube tutorials and being like, oh yeah, we can do that. Oh, that could be useful. Oh, we'll try that out as well. Uh, which is wicked. But um managed to grab this from Entoyment today. Had a good read through it while Libby was having a bit of a meltdown. She's got a rash and seems to be very uncomfortable, which is a bit miserable when you're when you're that little, but she seems to be okay. And I like this. I mean, what what was what's the benchmark for you guys when it comes to Spike magazines? What was your what was your pick? What was your favourite? Oh, probably uh, Necro. Oh, the Necro one was good. I I really like the Lizardman one. I don't know why. I think there was anything particularly special about it. I just no, like no, the artwork. No. And they, things. they had a good. Um, what, did they have the, the Lustrian League or was that Amazon's actually? No, that was the. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, makes sense no, with the Amazons because then you actually have another Lustrian team. But yeah, no, the. I don't I don't, I, mm. Mm. Maybe there was. Uh, maybe there I was. Don't know. I just remember there being like an excitement around the lizard men drop, and I, I think it was because it was teal and orange, Milton. That does seem to do it. Mm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, okay. oh, it looks like looks like my orc team. Mm. Looks like every YouTube video out there. Uh, <laughs> so yes. So there is quite a bit of fluff about gnomes. Um, it's really well written. There is an outrageous amount of gnome puns and stuff in here. This is this is a, if you take the time to read the spike, <laughs> some of it is an absolute work of art. And they don't really I can even see on the right there saying another astronomical issue, which is yep. just banging. Yeah, I don't know how uh, how well this is going to get picked up on camera, but um, <clears throat> we're not here to kind of fully. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no, he died. Hey, who's died? Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we're not here to give a, a full in-depth review. Like uh, People have done it already. 
this is this is an interesting thing. I mean, how do you guys feel about the, the? I think we've already talked about it a little bit, but like the release schedule for Games Workshop with the the previews of stuff going out to people and then having it ready for like actual buying, like ready for pre-order day, compared to how it used to be. Uh, how did it used to be? I mean, trips. I think it was it was like GMG used to drop it on release day, wasn't it? Originally, it was on release day, and then it moved back to pre-order day. And but now pre-orders are always two weeks. It feels quite a, a gap between preview videos coming out and actually stuff coming in the shop because it is it's a fortnight now. Oh, going the wrong way. Yeah. What I did like about this gnome release was obviously a few boxes and the star players were given out to particular members of the community to paint up. And then there was a Warcom article that dropped that showed those off. And I'd seen a couple that had been posted around. I thought that was quite nice because it kind of gives you... It's, if all you see is the box art and the box art painting, I think it can kind of skew your perspective on the team from an aesthetic point of view. So it's kind of nice to see someone else paint it, maybe not in the, the um, what do they call them, heavy metal style. Or, you know, maybe not to the same standard as well. That, that, that's, a, again, I thought it was a very diverse group of painters that got it as well. Mm. Which, I think, much to what you're saying, Norton, the box art is, is very, very, very cool, but it is good to see <laughs> different colours and different styles. But, Ben, what colour are you going to paint them in? Is it going to be blue and red? I haven't, even, <laughs> I haven't decided yet. I, I, I don't know. We should vote on it. We should vote on that's it. That's a good idea. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Good, what's your least favorite colors to paint them? Because you are absolutely sharp. I'm not going to say that. With no, yeah, but you're, just, but you're you'll yellow. Just pick it. <laughs> yellow is like yellow and orange are the two colors that generally are like the most miserable ones to paint. But your yellow is sharp. Oh, my favorite. Yeah, yeah, the um, anorak rats yeah. were brilliant. Yeah, great. Pink, pink is the secret for yellow. That's nice. obviously that's the secret. Yeah, <laughs> which is hilarious. Pink, pink, pink. Accurate. Um, so, the Spike, they've got the standard breakdown, they've got a good bit of fluff about gnomes and how they've always been in Blood Bowl, but they've just been hiding a little bit. Uh, for the Stargate people out there, kind of think of the Nox, where they kind of just make things invisible and disappear and they're actually there. There's a lot about how they're not halflings and how people always thought that some halflings... It's really clever little retcon, Ben, where they're like, no, 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 that team that you thought was a halfling team, they actually had beards. They were gnomes. <laughs> Uh, I mean, is that all of the historic lore? Like, there's like select like beardier halfling teams. They're just like, ah, oh, no, no, there, there are gnomes all this time. Um, that's, that's brilliant. I, I love yeah, that. I do too. I think it's, they've done really, really, really well with it. You've got the whole team roster. You've got the famous gnome teams. Which this little box page here. I don't know about you guys, but it's always like my favorite bit in every single mm. spike. Because I mean, we you know we're, we're going to be brewing up a team for the. Um, for the championship and it's like right well, well what do we call our gnome team where do they come from what's the story behind them because that's a really like sneaky thing about blood bowl milton we were talking about it the other day about how the thing the thing you want out of blood bowl at the moment is, is story right and a, a league gives you that story um i mean the fluff stuff like this i think really helps set the scene as well especially for a team that's brand new like like gnomes yeah definitely um yeah, we were talking about that when we were about the, the whole story aspect. And I think, you know, Lee, that is the one brilliant thing about League is you get to build that story, you kind of get to build that character. You get some cool troll with thick skull. And um, yeah, I think <laughs> with gnomes, gnomes, you're go going to have like a great time with that. The, the kind of the whole theme, the aesthetic of them, the sort of, it's almost like a British countryside thing. They've gone, you know, with the foxes and the bad geese. I was, uh, I was thinking of like names, and I, 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 I like alliteration. I thought of the something roosters because there's a, a thing in there. I don't think roosters fits, like because I feel like the gnomes are the woodland creatures, and the halflings are the farms, are the farm animals. Like you've got mm. the lupins, lumping croups, fighting cocks, and like all stuff like that. I feel like the farm creatures are halflings and the like the forest stuff, like tunnels of farthing wood. Or um oh Ben, what's what's that game with the badgers? 
Far as Far as as yeah. What's it based on? What's it what's it trying to be? Oh, red wool. Red wool. Red wool. Like red wool. Yeah. It, oh, there we go. Red wool. We need to get red wool into the team name. Um the reason that they've done you've even got a bit about some of their some of the gnome gods in there as well, which I think is really cool. Oh, really? Yeah, the trickster god. I can't remember his name, it's Rin something. That's what that's what that then that, 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 cool. that triggered my uh, alliteration. I was like, oh, we need a team. Start with the R uh or had the real wrestlers. Um so they've got all that, which is wicked. They've got the Hall of Fame team, which I'm not gonna lie, I haven't actually looked at yet. Um you've got Rowana in it. Rowana, sorry. Uh two trees. Uh, th I mean, what do you guys actually think of the Hall of Fame bit that they do? I think they're quite funny. I think they're quite endearing because it's like this is like a team. Uh, well, I, I like it because it's a story thing. This is like law, but like I always find it funny that it's like this is a team you play, and you're just like, how the hell did they end up with that skill? Or how like, they... wait, yeah, it was like then suddenly they got like an armor increase or something, and it's like, how did that happen? Like, how how did, <laughs> how did you get a player to that level and then go for armor? Do you know what the foxes? Yeah. The foxes don't have any upgrades at all. No movement, no nothing, which I feel is a miss. Um, you got dirty player. Sneaky Git lineman, which is good diving tackle. That's pretty good, actually. This is a very, like, I think it's a very restricted list. You've got a bit of defensive, oh, defensive guard. That seems good. Yeah. That seems good. Yeah, defensive on the Beastmasters is awesome. Uh, you've got dodge. You've got another bit of dodge. You've got bend. It's actually not horrific. Um, they've, got, they've got one of these special powers, which I, I think at some point they, they might be fun to run a game out with the Hall of Fame stuff. Um, but I think, I don't know, it might be better to just build your own Hall of Fame, like, out of yeah, a Yeah, I think league. so. Um, at the start of each of the gnome's team turns, they may choose one standing gnome, beastmaster, illusionist, or lineman, and roll a d6. On a 2+, plus, the chosen player is immediately removed from the pitch and then placed in an unoccupied square adjacent to the square they were in. At each turn, they get to 2+, plus, do that for one one of the gnomes, and that's the illusionist power just for the Hall of oh, Fame that... team. Now you don't need dodge. <laughs> yeah, just completely... You can just, uh, just two plus <laughs> blink your way out of a square. It's completely fine. Completely sidestep the dodge, uh, yeah. which is quite cool. Now, one thing I will say about this when I'm having a look through, the art, some of the art is amazing. In fact, all of the art is uh, amazing. Yeah. I don't understand why it is so very, very... Why are you going the wrong way, camera? Come on, come left. Why it is so very Hogwarts but it is, and I just, I love it. I, it makes no oh, sense. Oh, that is. Yeah. Oh, especially the little Robin Sports with the animals. 3D glasses. The Robin with the 3D glasses is <laughs> brilliant. Uh, that is, there is absolutely no reason for that, and I, that, that in itself makes me very, very, very happy. Uh, so they've got some really cool I stuff. I actually think the, um, the, the Blood Bowl art is one of my favourite things about the game. I, I think the, the, the artist behind Blood Bowl is phenomenal. And it just captures the spirit of the game like perfectly. I don't think there's a better better choice for the art. Uh, I think it's so good. Oh, it doesn't. A bat, bat with headphones. A bat with headphones. Hang, hanging from the bottom there. Uh, yes, yes, it is, Milk. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. All right, cool. No, I like that. Then that that art theme goes all the way through. So you've got that team. Then you've got Rowana. Now we tried Rowana on the stream uh, on Monday. Which was interesting because I went through the fluff and there is one bit here in 2498. I love this kind of stuff. You played against Rumbelo and oh. her team won 1 0. Seriously? Seriously. It's fake. Uh, That's perfect. Which ends with Ruana throwing a well timed shrew to knock Rumbelo to the turf. In the kerfuffle, the gnomes managed to score a touchdown, giving them the win. That happened. It did yeah. happen. I mean, mm. neither of the star players were kind of on the pitch for that, but you know, yeah. <laughs> spent most of it on the floor in <laughs> golden glory. Yeah, yeah, forgetting how to use jump up correctly. Um, however, art-wise, we've not seen this model yet. Let me see. We've got the art there. We've got the art there. There's a lot of talk about her appearance in this, which I think is good, and how she's always got loads of birds and like leaves and stuff. She is just a standard gnome. That is so in tune with the forest and so in tune with the animals that she just like has a that's a reindeer that's not a deer deer that's a reindeer like if that had a red nose it would be christmas so i'm <laughs> it's the ornament there's a painting challenge <laughs> well i've already done it um <laughs> i was gonna say if 
if the model comes out looking anything better than our one, I will be uh, <laughs> significantly disappointed because I thought this <laughs> this might be the worst thing I've ever put on a blood bowl pitch. And this was just so this was funny. just just so bad, and it was absolutely just... the best I could do with Hero Forge. It's just the fact it's just it's just a deer. Like it's. <laughs> <laughs> I think the ride is really cool. But the ride is, is awesome on a regular deer. It is just it, a regular deer. There was. It does have those like plastic kids toys vibes, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, potentially not. Oh, no. Not the one. The sad thing, though, right? If we're going to be running gnomes moving forward, there is no Romana model. There is no Romana model. <laughs> She's sticking around. Um, and and um, old. Uh, Freddy fishing line. Um, his model sold out, <laughs> so we oh, no. we are <laughs> stuffed when it comes to that. And you want to use Rodney, right? So I don't really. Come on, Punga! Like Punga, I know that yeah. Ugly's working on some stuff. Punga's working on some stuff. If they don't, if they don't Got drop Rebo a... as well. Yeah, if they don't drop a star player early, it's going to be a bit of a sham. Um, I actually really like the Forge World bottle. Uh, I went to purchase it. But by the time the queue had happened, it was it was it was lost to time and space, very much like the dice. So, bit of a shame, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, Romana in there looking pretty good. You've got her highlights. You've got dirt from the dugout. You've got Rodney Roachbait, uh, not Freddie Fishing Line. Um, when it comes to the two star players, guys, we we saw both of them in action a little bit. Uh, Warhammer seemed intent for Roana to do nothing and. Trips seemed very intent for um, Freddy Fishing Line to do absolutely nothing as well. I think this guy is as good as a positional as you can get for a team since Deep Root in Halflings in the previous edition of Blood Bowl. I, I, just, oh. I can't conceive ever running gnomes and not wanting to put Rodney on the roster. It's worth it. Pretty big endorsement. Well, 70k. And that fishing line ability, he's just a, a fast gnome lineman for 30k more, who also has uh, diving catch, catch on the ball, sidestep, and extra movement. <laughs> for 30k. I mean, sure he's got loner, but does he have wrestle? He's even got wrestle, so he's not nerfed like Rowana is. Interesting yeah, he's amazing. It, it, it almost feels like this, this, is, this is a, a pseudo positional um i think that's appropriate for stunting yeah players. i i i might even forego my hatred of running star players just to do this guy i'll, I'll call him like gnome fisherman and then zero to one on the team <laughs> and then he can be mine he can be freddy fishbait or whatever you call him i think that makes sense freddy, I mean, freddy Mil Fish Mil milton you're running stunty at the moment and having like star players be such an important part of um winning the game i mean it, you are your sensibilities challenged now you're kind of scumming it with hack Glenn? are you like fine i'll take a fisherman uh, well i mean I don't, I don't feel like i have a choice with the snotlings the snotlings have been a bit of a learning curve for me and I, I just don't know how to play them without a star player basically <laughs> so yeah i guess if i was on the gnomes i'd probably be in a similar position um if it's available uh, did, 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 sorry, did you just see the pun on his pay? I, I didn't notice that on his star player card. That his position is a lineman. How good is that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trips, I had noticed that. Trips, I think on the, the pod, it was just you and I, we talked about how each team seems to have like a super lineman as one of the star players. Yeah. Super lineman star. yeah. No, I meant he's a lineman. No, no, his position. Oh, it, God. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's why. It's because yeah, he's got a fishing line. Oh, yeah. Right there. <laughs> lineman. That's yeah, yeah, it's phenomenal. Seriously, this, as as I've now progressed to dadhood, this hits home seriously well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's wicked. I will be lifting these for our streams because they're just just so good. Then we've got one of my favourite bits at uh, the Fay Forest Cup. It is it is a little bit. It's it's only light touch this time, but I think they've done some some interesting stuff. So. The rule for this, again, I'm not sure if this is if the camera is quite dialed in, actually. Oh, that looks terrible, actually. So let's uh, zoom out and see if we can get some words on the screen. No. Um, they have gone for the fake up 
and the fake up rule is two balls. Interesting. Mm. Uh, I mean, I like this already. Two balls. So, illusionary balls. Gare, gnomes. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Basically, whenever a team kicks off, after placing the kick, the coach of the kicking team makes two deviation rolls instead of one, places a ball in each square the balls deviate to. They still do everything as normal. Um, does it cause a. I assume it still causes a uh, touchback. But anyway, whenever a player attempts to pick up, pass, catch, or hand off the ball, or attempts to score, they roll a dice. On a one, the ball was an illusion and it disappears, oh. and, and that oh. the other ball is therefore real. That, That's brutal. <laughs> I, I feel like that was on a special play card. I feel like we've seen that effect before somewhere at some point. But, uh, but yeah, that's, I think that's actually quite a hilarious one. There is a story of a gnome team taking yeah. on another team in there. I think it was gnomes versus gnomes. Uh, and they, it was just like, yeah, carnage, which I thought was a quite cool. They've got uh, one inducement, and I do want your, your opinion on this one, guys. So healing spites. Uh, a team that has hired healing spites may re-roll rolls of one when trying to recover any KO'd players at the end of each drive. So you take two kegs and some healing sprites, you've got Age of Sigmar with two plus re-rolling ones. Yeah. That would be <laughs> useful. Even my Skaven team would come back from that. That, that's, that It's 150k. Love it. Well, I mean, in this context. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I think we're a bit... Uh... Oh, sorry. I think we lagged out again there. Uh, mm. Sorry if I interrupted you. Oh, no, it's okay. Blooming Discord. <laughs> it's never happened with Google. Um, of course, it wasn't good with Google. <laughs> they have got a custom weather table. They've got powerful gales, spring showers, bright sunlight, summer scorcher. Um, it's interesting stuff. They've got gnomish trickery kickoff table as well. With uh, Instead of blitz, they've got old switcheroo. With the snap of the fingers, one of the watching gnomes causes chaos as multiple players suddenly trade places with each other. Each coach randomly selects two of their players on the pitch, and they switch places. So, randomly two of your players get swapped around on deployment on the kickoff. Actually, not horrifically overpowered. I was going to yeah. say, if you want to run like an offbeat league or like an offbeat one-off kind of game... Normally, when you look at these, you kind of just go, oh, okay, it's a bit of fun or whatever, or it's a bit serious. This one actually looks like you could kind of have a bit of a laugh with it. Like, it doesn't sound like it's awfully I mean, it's all better. swingy. It's all better than a vicious ref, so as long as <laughs> yeah. that's gone, it's good. Uh, a cunning plan, that one is. Uh, you might get to make an extra block action. It, it's cool. I mean... It's all good. It all sets a really nice theme. Um, and then I'll tell you what, we'll come to the pitch next and then because we'll talk about that as well. Um, and then we'll kind of talk about having a gnome league because I think they've done it. I think no, all right, we'll do gnome balls as well. So the mystical forest pitch, which we've got right here. Mm -hmm. uh, forest floor is the other side, basically just minus one to rush attempts forever, always, which is, you know, your mileage may vary. Tested. Yeah, yeah, essentially. Then you've got Healing Glow, uh, which is whenever a player is KO'd or suffers a casualty, on a six, they're placed in reserves instead of being KO'd or casualty. Players with a stunty trait may apply a plus one modifier to this role. <laughs> so it basically gives wow. stunty players a five plus ward save from KO's and casualties. It's just straight to reserves with you. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that. But yeah, I love that. The real, the real meat here is the gnomish portals. Now, Ben, on stream we talked about it, didn't we? But because um, mm -hmm. uh, oh, cool. I'm terribly sorry, I can't remember who put it in the chat. But basically, you wander into a portal, you roll a dice. On a one, you go into reserves immediately. Two, three, four, nothing happens. Five, six, you appear on the other portal just immediately. Uh, and it doesn't end your activation. You just you just wow. carry on, but if you're holding the ball and you end up getting wand, you uh, do it is a turnover if you're holding the ball, um, and that counts if you get pushed into the portal as well. That's that's kind of fun. I would love to see this actually in action. It's very dungeon ball. 
um, exactly. with kind of less RNG because you know where you're going. Yeah, it's just there to there, and I think that's going to create because, of course, you've got the you know the full whack of the pitch. You've got all the uh, like just the, the prospect of bouncing one side to the other to get your full Stargate mode. I think is I think is really wicked. I think that stick your fox, stick your fox on there, get the ball to him, and fox, get, score fox, in one turn. Absolutely <laughs> horrific, right? <laughs> but I, I think that and the the two known balls. Uh, one is an oversized acorn. Uh, when a player is in possession of the acorn and they activate, they roll a d6 on a one. The player reduces their movement by two because they are attacked by various woodland creatures. Uh, and the gnomish idol. Uh, when a player in possession of gnomish idol uh, would fall over or be knocked down, roll a d6 on a six. The player somehow keeps their footing and does not fall over or get knocked down. Uh, no armor roll is made, etc., etc. So they kind of get a six plus ward save to stay standing as well, which which is interesting. Mm. That, that's quite cool. So with all of that, we've got all this stuff for gnomes. Um, I do think it would be a very fun little like little mini game. The only uh, specifically to have all the stunty teams in, like because I think it would be a bit of a miss with. Uh, I don't know. I think even regular teams would be quite cool. I I love these league rules, like you guys said, for, for one-off games, for like a mini league, for whatever. It, it, I don't I don't think they needed to add anything more there to get the kind of gnome thing. Do you? No, no. I think this is like this is the theme. This is the things we want, and we've said it so many times. Where it's like all, what we crave, especially like in our little corner of Blood Bowl, is just like mixing things up. You know, a bit of variety and. I would love for us to be able to run this on like uh no is the stream gone okay yeah cool um i would love to be able to run this like in the championship or a championship that we do where we just use these rules because they do not get enough um spotlight i think they don't get enough coverage um because I, I i don't know anyone who plays with them no i think we, we tried the vampire rules didn't we but nothing happened and we did use the last yeah. ones on your game on the trips, but again, I don't think anything particularly happened with it. Um, it could, could be kind of fun, like for the championship or whatever, like the home team's stadium. You play their actual yeah. rules. Ooh, that's a really good idea. Done, done, Milton. Absolutely yeah. done. Should we actually just do that for this next one? Yeah. I think we should just do that. Yeah. Home and away games. Yeah, love it. Uh... I don't know if uh, do they all have special stuff. Yeah, we can work it out. We'll yeah, we'll, make it, we'll, we'll make, make it up if they don't. We'll we'll most of them do. If not, the death zone is full of stadiums and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. That'll be fine. Then they've got the uh, League of Their Gnome bit, which basically just breaks down each of the players, what their kind of role is. And I think they give some pretty good advice. So the Gnome Illusionist, they've described as a secondary ball carrier. Um, as in, like, you get the ball, and then at some point you're going to hand off to the fox. The fox there is, it even says in there that they're greedy for SPP, and you want to try scoring with the actual standard gnomes, but the fox is always a, a valid, like, backup angle as well. Which, again, I just think is, is bang on the money, because it is exactly correct, uh, which I've been really mm. impressed with. And then you've got some starting rosters here. Um, can we, can we... Oh. I think where the camera is kind of at an angle, it's ruining the, the blur, but it doesn't matter. There's starting gnome suggestion. They've got six gnomes, two each of the uh, dudes, three rerolls, and apothecary and assistant coach for one million. So that's different from the one I've suggested because they've got 14 players. I think the one we suggested, or the one we ran with, had a little bit less gnomes. Yeah, one less gnome and one less assistant coach for that fourth reroll to begin a league which I, I yeah. do think is a better angle to take. I don't think this is, this is bad, but one gnome, you can buy a 40k gnome after one game. You just have to suck yeah. it up for one game. You've got the apothecary to keep your... Um, not to keep, ben, you'll know this better than anybody at the moment, to, to keep the uh, positionals actually on the pitch in the game. Normally, right, you buy an apothecary because you're like, well, I don't want my gutter runner to die because I want to level them up. But gnomes, it's like, I, don't, I need the fox back. Yeah, I'd even maybe use it for KOs if you get like the guard guys knocked out. Use it to make them stunned because them being on the pitch is so crucial. It's interesting. I think it's the first time we've kind of ever wanted an apothecary quite so high as to to, to kind of yeah 
on a stanty as well. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, trips, does that not just demonstrate that they've done a quite good balancing job by making these players really good and useful? Well, not really good, but really useful, but also vulnerable. I think so, yeah, because a lot of stunty teams, you're quite happy just to run really cheap loads of linemen because there's no differentials. But with the gnomes, you're like, I want as many and all of the positionals as possible because they actually do something. I mean, Milton, how many apothecaries did you use for your snotling team in the league? Uh, none. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Which I think is good. That would, that would inflate my team and I wouldn't be able to buy more. <laughs> I, they do have a second uh, roster which comes in at 850 saying that you've got 150k to use for star players. So even though gnomes are not a petty cash heavy team, because they're an expensive team, suggesting that you keep 100k spare so that you can take Rodney or you know whatever I think is I think is also a very reasonable plan. This roster, or the our four reroll version, is if you want to play gnomes as a gnome team. This one mm. is if you want to play gnomes and have kind of the, the the Rodney angle, which again I think I think they're both really valid, which I think is a very good job on that page. Yeah, um, that's, it's uh, a good understanding of the game, I think, which is really nice to see. It's nice that this is someone picking this up and playing gnomes for the first time is going to get some some reasonably good advice, which is so useful, mm. right, for a brand new team. I mean, I, I maintain Ben, you may have played gnomes more than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> kicking around <Yes. laughs> yeah, right. um that's an interesting one uh their team development section again really good uh dodge on the lineman dodge on the beastmaster dodge on the illusionist nothing at all on the woodland fox grab guard brawler and multiple block on the treeman bang on right yeah 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 they, they've got some good uh secondary skill advice some good stat advice uh Woodland dodge, dodge, dodge. Yeah, it is basically just dodge on all the guys. They've got some setups. I've not really looked at these. I think this is going to be an interesting thing. I think it'll be worth trying these out at some point to see if they're particularly useful, um, especially because we normally do a, a setup video for the teams. But with a team like Gnomes that is so brand new, I mean, Ben, you, you, you deployed one and then second time around deployed again and then trips. Did you play Gnomes? Yeah, I played Gnomes. I used the Beastmasters behind the trees. Mm. which i thought was very 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 useful uh and they've deployed the beastmasters quite deep on their line um but defense ben one fox offense two foxes interesting mm. Mm. then you've got acorn i think it's wicked that they've got him in the bear in the book i think that is entirely correct i think that is entirely the right thing to do because acorn is obviously the other forest animal so there is three star players in there it's just you know We've seen Acorn a billion times now. And then you've got the College of Shadows for Gnomes, um, which I do like because you do kind of have an alternate colour scheme here in that he's wearing purple instead of red, instead of blue, which led me to picking up a can of purple spray paint from Entoyment today, ready for my gnome team. So I'm like, right, okay. <laughs> got my co-shadows right here. So, uh, yeah. although I think this was done with a base of brown and then I purpled over the top but I don't know a purple known team sounds about right then you've got the ubiquitous comic book all pictures of the trees and things and that's the book so nothing there that we weren't expecting but I I wholeheartedly think this is the best one for fluff that is probably because the fluff is brand new for the first time and Secondly, the, the dad jokes are just are just wicked as well. Yeah, at a glance, it looks like it was written with so much like love and fun. And I think that shows, and that's why I liked that necromantic one before, was just that it was fun. It was like reading a book that someone's just like had free reign to just kind of be crazy with. And, and this is what this looks like. And I'm, I'm looking forward to reading this. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with this one. Um, the only thing I will say... There's no wizard. There's no special inducements for knowing with the exception of the healing spite. That's the that's the shit. only thing missing. Uh, that's the only thing which so I, I think I have to give Necro first place. But this one second place. The only thing it was missing was a special gnome team inducement, a special wizard like they could, trips. They could have given them some shadow, even the College of Magic wizard, right? Yeah, there, there was there was potential there. 
But I guess what they're trying to do is to stay away from giving you anything other than what a, a quite a tight set of inducements and star players. Yeah, I yeah, I mean Ben rules bloke. <laughs> it exists, but then I don't think do people w- use. I uh, their wizards never break it. They always just they're expensive. They're for what they do, but they're a lot of fun. That's when they and come for free and dungeon bowl is when it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. They are the expensive mistake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not something you have to go. And the only other thing I want to do is I've not had a chance to open the box yet. But um obviously we've got we've got our gnome teams. Now Milton, I think you and Trip shared a picture of the instructions for the gnome team and them being in some quite yes, that was passed on through the Discord. Yeah, quite significant pieces. Let's go to the side camera here because I think we'll probably get a better shot of this brew. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go. Um, that is a lot of little pieces, but I mean, we love. Do you a good... get yeah. a spare goose and a spare badger? Yeah, you get uh, one of each, don't you? That's cool. Oh, sorry, one of each on each <laughs> sprue, so two, so two of each. Nice. Which is which is. I pretty... can imagine there's going to be some fun things happen with the spare goose. It's your acorn, right? It is, yeah. Because I, I, I maintain a acorn is a great choice with with the guard boys, right? Yeah, goose, goose corn, goose corn, honk, honk corn, goose, yeah, honk, honk corn, yeah, honk corn. Okay, so the beastmaster is in one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Seven. He's only eight, like nine. four millimeters high. <laughs> Gnome lineman there is in uh, one, two pieces for the body, plus a face and what looks awfully like oh, a second arm, which is cool. Now, something I think is really cool is they've got different faces, so it looks like they can be mixed and matched, which is a really interesting design choice. And there is a ton of little add-ons to the base, which we've never seen before. Which yeah no in blood bowl yeah that's really rare I, don't, I yeah I don't think we've seen it before two heads interesting box uh what looks like alternate hats for the wizard lady potentially what little bits have they got for the base what what are the uh, materials so what do we got oh, let's see if we can actually see on the sprue here uh oh that's that's yeah this is definitely a super glue job they're not. I wouldn't worry about plastic. Uh, stop. Oh, stop it. <laughs> stop it. I'm spreading lies and misinformation. <laughs> Dangerous. Uh, they've got a little... Um... Oh, the halfling helmet with a thing growing out of it. You've got some weeds there. You've got a little watering can. They've, they've... That's awesome. That's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, I do like that. In fact, I think... I, I was trying cool. to think if there was another team that came with them, but I don't think so. Really don't think there is. Yeah, you've got the little extras, which which is which is pretty cool. Now I haven't uh, had a chance to build them. I am looking forward to building them, uh, not as much as I'm looking forward to Ben building them and painting them, because that is going to be a significantly better finish than uh, my uh, classic spray a color and agrax it, and then maybe add some details. Uh, no, that shadow team is gorgeous. So shadow team came out all right. And the and the Norse, yeah, you've done. Oh, the Norse, great. I actually bothered to paint. Yeah. That was uh, I, I yeah. enjoyed the Norse too. Oh, nearly there. Oh, there they are. There they are. Yeah, like looking just, down, just chilling out <laughs> next to the Vargeist. I, I love the Yeti. Yeah, he just good. straight up looks like a villain from He Man. Uh, he does. He does. <laughs> <laughs> something like that, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so, oh my God, Milton. I'm sorry, we forgot the dice. We forgot the dice. I know. The most, well, you leave the best to last. So. Leave the best to last. Potentially so. Potentially so. So, dice. Um, well, I jokingly called these the Night Lord dice because it's they spawn. are blue and red in a significantly Night Lord scheme. Uh, I don't think they're great for the stream, but I do think. They're quite nice. And in person, let's see if we can get the uh, overhead. Let's see if we, yeah, there we go. Let's actually use the side line camera so that we can actually have a look at the dice. 
Um, they're not the worst, are they? No, they're, they're really not, not the best. I, I really like the colours. Like, I think that's, they'll be good to play with. But yeah. The, the opposing coaches still might be going, what, what exactly is that rolled? Uh, they're an improvement on some of the others we've had recently. Yeah. Potentially, I don't know if you would. Well, yeah, you are the dice guy. I, I, I'm, I like them. I like them. The block dice. Obviously, you got a lot of stuff going on with the block dice, and the red kind of drowns out a little bit. But the D6, nice work on the logo. Yeah. Really interesting. Like this team has a really Bretonian vibe to it, and I don't know if it's just because they've got like the half and half blue and red everywhere, uh, including mm, on a tree map. Sort of flag, and yeah, the, the what do you call it? Not quite the fleur de lis. Not quite fleur de lis or whatever it is. But... Oh, I know what you mean. Like with on like the armor platings and things that they uh, wear. Yeah, they, they are quite like I'm thinking of like the, on the tree man. He's got like a very like ornate mm. like armor. He does. Thing. Yeah, that that is quite Bretonian. I know what you mean. Uh... Kind of elven slash Bretonian. I guess yeah. Well, that kind of befits. Um, yeah, he's got a little armor piece on his arm. It's just. Just it just it just has that Bretonian vibe. I know it means nothing, but I do think it's pretty cool. Um, right, all in all, bike is good. The dice are good. Team looks wonderful. I'm looking forward to painting the team, and I have been enjoying the gnome team so far. I mean, Ben, any thoughts on? We've we played a few games. We've played a few versus games. We've got sevens coming up on Monday. Then we would have played, what, three elevens games and two sevens games on stream for gnomes. Overall, what would you give them as a letter grade so far as a new addition to Blood Bowl? And I want everybody's, everybody's letter grade on the introduction of gnomes to Blood Bowl. The gnome team and oh, the star players. What would you give it? I know full American. I give it a qualifier. I'm going to go A minus. That is not bad. Yeah, genuinely. I really like them. I'll, ju I'll justify it after everyone else's grade. Trips, you've had a couple of games as well. I'm going to go A minus and have a reason for the uh, minus. So it'd be interesting to see. Uh... Milton, hopefully you've had a chance to catch some of the streams. You've definitely caught us talking about stuff. What are your thoughts on the Gnome team? What's your grade? Uh, B for Ban. <laughs> B for Ban. <laughs> oh, the old nap hammer over here. No, I. Yeah, I, yeah, I've caught both the streams. The games have been really fun. I, These are so nice. I don't, I don't know. Just... It's it's very difficult to judge. I wonder where they're going to kind of sit in the stunty, kind of tiering, or not even necessarily in in a stats way, but in a sort of what's the word I'm looking for, like um, a popularity way. Because we've seen, you know, halfling's very popular. It's not things very popular. Um, ogres too, but we probably see them a little bit less, maybe. Um, and then goblins are obviously struggling. I just kind of wonder where the gnomes are going to sit in that. I'm not quite sure I've made my decision on it yet, so I'll go for a B plus, sit just below. That's fair. I love the introduction of the new team. I think they've done a great job picking and adding a team that fits really well in. They've well thought out how the team plays. They've thought out well how, the, how they fit into the world, which is something that gets a bit forgotten in Blood Bowl because it's a bit of like an anything goes thing. But they've done a really good job fitting them into the world. They are a different stunty team with a very different shtick. Some very interesting positionals, including the Illusionist, who quite frankly no one has kind of solved yet. Like, you potentially like, is this just a really disappointing great player, or is it a great normal player? It's a really interesting one, so I love that. Love Rodney. Rowan is quite interesting. Um, I, just, I just don't particularly know what they could have done better without them landing and being super pushed. So I think they've landed the balance right, they've landed the fluff right, they've landed the models right, they've landed the pitch right. Literally a for me and the only thing that could have got them i think an a plus would have been uh just a wizard and more huh? and, and another star player to land it like the tree man's okay but we already had a tree man so yeah, missing the 
a genuine third new star for me is the bit that mm-hmm. knocks it down. That's very fair. Yeah. Yeah, especially the, the, the funniest part. Line in them. The funniest part being that Acorn is the third star, and he comes with the old Tree Man, not the new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if the new Tree Man comes with an Acorn. I don't think it does. Uh, no, no. I've left that one. I, the I, my then. my minus justification was the Tree Man, and that was just the the whole. I love the team, like you say, they've got a really strong identity, which I think is very very important. Um, for teams, not just to come out and sort of just be another stat block um, yeah. human team or whatever. It's a bit of a risk um, in Blood Bowl because of how like, yeah. poor the rules are. I, yeah. Um, but these have like a really clear identity, a really unique play style. Um, visually really unique as well. And that is why I think it's a minus because I don't think the trees hit that mark. I think they're just halfling trees and it's just like, I don't know, it's mm. a little mm. bit, that's just like, they, they work with the team but then they kind of don't. Because you can only throw linemen, and then you've like, I, I don't know. They, they, I think they work because it's like I, a, I know what you're you. getting at. Like, they're, yeah. it, it's like they're new, but they could have been something completely different that fitted more with the team. Yeah, it was like how when you like Snotlings got the trolls. I wish they kind of had like. Different oh, I wish there were more trolls. Like, they yeah, were, like a slightly like different version. Black orcs, renegades, orcs, Snotlings. They've all got the yeah. same troll models, right? So, and I know you can go and obviously choose your own from other sources or even from the uh, the uh, other games workshop ranges, but it would be really nice to have Blood Bowl themed. Well, yeah, more themed around the team as well, because that yes. original troll that you get in the starter set is obviously themed around the old orc team, not the new black orc team or the goblin team or yep. any of the other teams that it's associated to. <laughs> so it would be, be cool to see some big guys that are, even like with the, the Chaos Renegades and stuff, like it'd be, be nice to just have like some unique yes. big guys. Yeah, that's it for me. I could have gone for like a bear or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I think tree works, but even if it was just like a birch tree man or something, like a, like a limber one that's like slightly less punchy, but it's just a different slap, stat or a different skill would it just? Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. made it interesting because you're gonna see if you play gnomes versus halfling, you're gonna see four trees. Oh, yeah. take root doing four tree things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, take root. Oh, uh, the uh, the got dodge mugs arrive tomorrow as well. Oh, amazing! Which I'm nice. very excited for. So, are they merch? They will be merch. They will uh, merch. Keep an eye out. I have ordered a few for us at the first, and then uh, if if they come out all right, it's just, if you tweak the design, otherwise I'll just like stock up massively because I think they're wicked. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll run tackle on my dungeon ball team and then drink out of the mug. <laughs> <laughs> god, god dodge. God dodge. <laughs> Um, wicked. I, I think, yeah, ultimately a really big win. The spike is, is, is great because they've actually expanded the world of Blood Bowl, um, which I don't know about you guys, but you get the spike. There's a couple of cool stories and bits, but this is the first time they've really kind of stretched it out a bit. Uh, and I, I, I like this because I'd like to have a bit more, a bit more world um, than just, like Ben said, like stat blocks. Um, because the game is so good. The game is so crunchy at times. You don't need models. Yeah. You don't need narrative. But actually, the reason Blood Bowl has been so successful in trips, you'll know this from the earlier editions and stuff, and from being a big Necromunda themed, like the lore and the story is is such a massive part. Yeah. And I think that's they've done that really well with names because they they do have that theme that really wraps around them, and it not something that's just been borrowed from somewhere else it is genuinely new in for them mm-hmm. yeah really 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 big win right guys before we wrap up anything else you want to touch on for gnomes the gnome spike the gnome release other than hopefully loads of people will be picking it up on saturday when we're at enjoyment but yeah hopefully it's gone smoothly and people have got stuff i mean dice mm-hmm. obviously people don't get but yeah got your set of i hope you're all building them and painting them on sunday and uh, tune in to watch uh, Ben do them and yeah. get some tips and tricks along the way. Paint along. Oh, yeah. Build, get to have the, to have the chat. Uh, what are we doing Sunday? I don't know. I might have to parent after taking Saturday off, but uh, otherwise I'll, yeah. I'll try. Oh, TV's trying to turn itself off. Don't do that. Um, wicked. Right. In which case, guys, I think we will wrap up. Thank you very much, all of you, for hanging out. It's nice to see you. It's good to go through this stuff, and I'm looking forward to Saturday as well. And for now, though, 
Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back soon with more bubble content. Happy blocking. I've lost the mouse. There it is. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the channel even further, please like and subscribe. It really does help us out. Or come join us on YouTube members or in Patreon, where you can get exclusive access to some content, some loot, early access to basically everything we do, as well as regular competitions. Or you can pick up some Bonehead Podcast loot either on our website at boneheadpodcast.com. We've got the Dungeon Bowl things. We've got tokens and stuff like that. Or on our Spreadshirt site as well. Everything you do just helps us make more content and hopefully do it of better quality. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Happy blocking.